Hello and welcome to the second part of our tutorial series on the JS 13 kilobyte games competition. What you'll end up at the end of this lesson is with a map, something like this, and you'll be showing this on the browser using the Contra framework. So you'll be learning how to build this type of maps using the tiled editor and I'm also going to show you how to reduce the size of images using the free program GIMP. So it's not going to be all coding and actually we're not really going to do much coding in this lesson. So let's get started. The assets that I'm using can be found in opengameart.org and the author Charm, um, I'm giving him attribution as required by the Creative Commons license. You can also download all the, uh, the assets of this game and the final game from the comments section. So the first requirement here for you will be for you to download the free and open source program Tiled at mapeditor.org. So this program is a generic level creator. You can create levels in here, tile based levels. So you can use these sort of elements in your games. and then you can import them into Contra. But learning to use this, this tool is useful for other game engines as well. For example, if you're into Phaser, um, in Phaser you can also load maps built with tiles, and so can you do it with other engines as well. Um, so you can download it and install it, and the program that I'm going to be using to reduce the size of the images, remember that in, in this competition the size of the images is key, so it needs to be as small as possible, is this free program GIMP. So now that you have Tile installed, uh, go and download as well the, the basic Tiles file from here. So I've done so already. The, the file that we download looks like looks like this. This, um, this program makes it look black, but that's actually transparent background. So this is what spreadsheets usually, usually look like. They have all the different elements and each one of these boxes has the same size. So that uh, so that you, when you know the size, then you can configure tile so that you can basically paint levels with these sort of files. In this particular case, the tiles are 16 by 16 pixels. So I'm gonna go and open tiled and I will create a new map. So I already have a map in here, um, but what I'm gonna do is just create a new map so that I can show you from scratch how to do it. So when you create a new map, it's important that you make sure that the orientation is orthogonal, the layer format CSV, and also um, in here you can set the size. So my, my, my game world will have 20 by 20 tiles. I wouldn't recommend go much bigger um, just because of the restriction of the of the competition. The size of the tiles is 16 by 16. But having said so, I'm actually not gonna I'm not gonna load this file directly into, into Contra. Actually, I made a mistake when I said that before. What we will do here is export the image. But um, you could also try to load it um, to load the actual file, in which case you could have much bigger files. It's obviously bigger when you load the image because you are loading the, the same element many times whereas if you only load the the tile sheet and the tmx file uh, it's it is smaller but this is how we're doing it here because it's just a lot simpler and i'm also not fully sure if you uh, if there is a tmx support for contra in this section here you can create layers and that's that's very easy to to have for example a background layer and then and then an overlay layer. So that's what the background layer would look like and that's the overlay layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and create both layers. So I'm gonna create the background and then I'm gonna add with the, there's like a plus sign here, uh, add tile layer, and this is gonna be overlay. So now we actually need to import the, the, the sprite sheet. So you go to map and then go to new tile set and uh, you can browse the for and find the file, in this case, basic tiles, the one that we downloaded. But you can also download other tiles from opengameart.org. So I've got that one, the, tile, the size is 16. If there was any margin or spacing, you can specify it there. And um, here we go. So 
um, for some reason I'm seeing everything very small after the uh, new upgrade in Windows 10. Um, so I apologize in advance for the, how, what this looks like. It looks a bit strange. All the icons are super small. So let's go ahead and start making our map. You can use this tool here, to, um, the one I have selected to draw. So you can paint and see how I can turn that layer on and off. I can also use the paint icon and just go ahead and paint everything like grass. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to be drawing a few things. So, for example, you can you can paint some water. So I'll leave this uh, to you, up to you so you can you can draw whatever you want. Um, so you can build a, a beautiful level and then with overlay, this is where we will use these elements that have transparency. Because um, if we were to use them as background, so I'm clicking background now. Uh, see how the, the edges are actually transparent. Um, so it doesn't work that way. So we're going to delete those from our background layer. Uh, so I make sure I have background selected and now I can paint this with something else. So this is obviously a very, um, not a very pretty map, but you get the idea. And uh, this is the map that I created earlier um, without the pressure of the, of the cameras and the recording. So once you're done with your map, obviously you save. And if we if were, since what we're doing here is exporting the image file, that's what, what I'm going to show you how you can do it. Otherwise, you can just save it and find a way to load the DMX files, which are actually just uh, text files. They're XML files. So you go, you can go to um, it's a file export as image. And then uh, you can you can select, for example, only include the visible layers. If you had many layers, you could uh, only have the visible ones. And there are a few other options. You can have the, the grid drawn. Obviously, I don't want that. So in that way, you export the map. So uh, since I want to show you how the image gets reduced with GIMP, I'm going to import export this one because the other one has already been reduced. So let me, let me just make sure that I'm in the right location into in my computer so i'm just going to be an uh let's just find the the correct folder so js 13 kilobyte games and that's the cross the rpg and i have created this file uh, original assets where i'm putting different things so this would just be called map save uh, export and if it, we go to that folder now you see that this is five kilobytes so it's pretty small but it can always be smaller so let's go ahead and open this with GIMP, which is a, a, an open source alternative to Photoshop. So it's open in GIMP. And what you can do here is actually um, you can you can you can transform your image. And what we want to what, what, what we want to do in this case, since our canvas is 256, we can actually scale this too. To 256 so that it matches exactly and we don't we don't have more image than what we actually need so that already should have reduced a little bit the image but the big reduction with png files comes from here if you go to mode and change to indexed that will make a massive difference and why is that because when you're uh, when you have when you don't when you don't have many colors so this is a, uh, it's not a, a photo um, indexed allows you to only save um, only save a certain amount of, of colors and and in that case uh, it, it, it is stored it's all stored as an 8-bit bitmap which means that we only have up to this amount of colors and and uh, no we're not storing thousands of colors so it's it's in the, it has to do with the way the image is stored and to actually save it as a PNG, you go to File. Don't go to Save because that saves it in the GIMP format. But go to Export. You can also do Overwrite. But I want to export it so we can really compare, see if it make if it made much of a difference. So I'm gonna export it and make sure that compression level is whoops all the way to the top. So now if we go to the file, um, well you can see that's actually. It's a bit strange that so I think what happened was because we reset we resized we actually ended up with more colors than we had before so I'm gonna do this again and and in this case I'm not gonna resize the image because when we res when we resize the image 
different colors got that were next to each other got merged. For example, if there was gray and green, then we ended up with some something in between. So I'm just gonna try now with the with the mode and convert it to uh, eight bit bitmap or also called indexed mode and go to um, export as and let's call this one map number two. So export and export. Let's go back to the folder and see what we get now. So see that now it's two kilobytes. So just doing that was more than half uh, reduction. So that's massive reduction. Um, what I'm what I did as well was that I took some of the some of the other images and I exported them individually. So I went on GIMP. I can quickly show how how it's done because I know a lot of people. Um, are more familiar with the programming side, but I also want to show that some of the other tasks that you have to do when you're making games. Um, so you can, uh, in this way, you can select an image and I'm, uh, I'm pressing copy, I'll do it with this copy, and then you can paste it as a new image. So paste as a new image, it looks very, very small. And then don't forget to do the optimization here. So mode indexed, convert, and then you can do export, export as, this could be uh, another character. And again, full compression. So we ended up with this character here, one kilobyte, it's really less than one kilobyte, that's just the approximation Windows does. So that's how I generated player and enemy. So I'm gonna go and copy these ones. And in our, um, in our game, in our game, I'm gonna add a new, so here it is, game. I'm gonna add a new folder called um, assets. And inside of assets, I'm gonna create a folder called images. And inside images, I'm gonna place the enemy, the player, and also this uh, background that I that I had already exported from the from previously, but you can use the one that you created or the one that, um, that I got. So before we, what we'll, what we'll do next is actually uh, import it into Contra, into our code. But before that, it's time for a quick, or maybe not so quick, but important challenge. So I want you to download and install Tidal. It's basically what we've been doing. Get a, find a spreadsheet from Open Game Art. It doesn't have to be the same one that I'm using. Um, when you find a spreadsheet, it, it always says what the size of the, of the tiles are. So it can be 16 times 16 is a good size for this competition. Create a level map and well, the loading into your code part, you can't do it yet, but you you have to do it as soon as you see how it's how it's done. So pause your video and get at least the level made, and then we'll work together into the loading part. Okay, welcome back. So um, it's pretty much what I already covered. So it's important that you create your map and you make sure that you, you define the size and you make sure that this the size here is the right size for the tiles that you found. And then if you have these sort of elements that have transparent back uh, borders or transparent areas, you can have them as an overlay layer and then you can have a background layer as well. So you can create your, your map however you want and then you're gonna go and export it as an image and then inside of GIMP, you're gonna load that image and you're not gonna resize it as we just, as uh, you're not gonna scale it, which is what I had done before. Um, although well, you, you can actually change the canvas size because that's not, gonna, that's not gonna modify the image. It's just gonna cut parts of it. So for example, if you change canvas size, uh, you basically have less image, but you're not scaling it. So you're not getting the colors mixed. If you get the color mixture, that's when your image grows in size. So uh, when you're done, you do mode, indexed and then you go to file export export as and that's your image so now let's do the last part of this of this lesson of this very long lesson which has to do with um with getting the image into our code so we're going to open our code editor in this case i'm using atom and uh, we have now in the assets and images section, we have uh, these images that we that we created. And we need now to preload all of these assets. 
before we preload the asset, we need to specify the, the location of the assets. So for that, we do contra dot asset. There's a, a, a variable, an object here called asset path dot images so that we can tell contra where our images live. So our images live in a folder called assets and then images. So now we can proceed to preloading these assets or to, to load these assets at the beginning of the game. So contra dot load assets and um, the assets are in this case background dot png. They are so we add them like that, just one by one, enemy.png and also uh, player.png. What happens then after that is completed, the following code gets executed. Actually, actually this is made um, not like that, but it's like a, it's a, it is a promise. So we have it then, and then you have your function. This is a, a way to do a synchronous JavaScript so that when this completes, um, our function our function gets executed sorry this doesn't go there um so now what we'll be doing is actually putting all of our game inside of that function so the first thing that happens is that all the assets get loaded and once that's completed our game begins and the the the, the very last thing that i'm going to be doing here is taking care of the background so this will be the background and I'm gonna remove these uh, these checks because I that was from the previous challenge, and I'm gonna replace background here, background here, and instead of um, specifying uh, all of these properties with height and color, uh, we are gonna specify image. And the way to access the image is simply contra dot images and dot the name of the file in this case background. In this case background so that should be enough to get our image shown on on the screen so let's uh, let's find our game again our game file is here I'm gonna open this with Google Chrome and for some reason I'm not getting my image shown so let me see what what error we we are making some somewhere um, so that is contra.images, um, assets, asset paths. So we're missing an S in here. This is asset paths and that should do it. And the image, it says it's not found. Yeah. So as you saw, it was missing the, the slash. So that's how you have to specify. So voila. There you go, you, we've got our image loaded. Now the part in here and uh, in the documentation that explains this in detail, so there, there are more options and things. Uh, if you go to assets, you, you can learn more about the asset loading aspect of this, of this library. So you can also load audio files and JSON files with level information. And also um, you can also work, uh, there are more options to work with sprites. And there are also options to work with spreadsheets so you could you could uh, find a way to you could load uh, one file that contains different images so that's all for this lesson we've covered a lot to summarize what we did was to use the tiled level editor to create an image normally you 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 would use for example if you're working with facer and that's something we cover in the course uh, we would use the tile editor to create levels and then we import those files but in this situation uh, we are just exporting the image and then we are finding ways to reduce image sizes using GIMP. And lastly, this is how we can load images into Contra. And you can use the same things I used before, like the speed. So everything we do, the previous challenge would also be valid with this code. So go ahead and add the background for the, that, that you created and let's continue.